Get your day started right. From our shack to yours, this is Coffee and Ham Radios. We are live in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> so, Richard, you don't need to download the entire DMR database. You can just put in the people that you care about. Right. Um, and you can put that in manually from the front panel of most of your DMR radios. So, I mean, I think that the entire DMR database is like 270 to almost 300,000 people. Uh, something like that, yeah. Yeah. I like to have as many in there as I can because that way I can look at my radio and I can see their name, their call sign, their location. Right. And w at least with the DMR 6X2, you can change what you see on there. Um, and there's there's tools out on the internet that will allow you to filter the DMR database. So if you wanted to right. exclude, a, a, like the Canadians, man, I just I don't I don't want to talk right. to the Canadians, so I don't download the Canadian call, call signs. Um, but if it was any VK, Victor, don't Victor go. Echoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, that's Australia. Never mind. VK is all right. V E V A V E yeah. V E V A whatever. Viva, the no Viva people. Viva. Even though they're very polite. I mean, but you can awesome. you can filter, and that's the easiest way to do it. Or you can put it into a spreadsheet and then manipulate it there, and then use the spreadsheet to import into your radio. I will say that DMR is probably probably can be the most daunting to start with um, when you start so messing start with there. it. It seems more ubiquitous, but yeah, it, it lost me at color codes or something of that. Uh, it's nature. just a it's just a fancy <laughs> repeater PL tone. That's all it is. Yeah, it's just a digital PL tone. Is that right? Okay. Yep. And generally, and then, you're going to set it to one and not care about it anywhere. I mean, and then there was fancy, um, like a unless you dual fancy. time codes or something like that. Uh, so time DMR, slots, time slot DMR time will slots. yeah time slots. DMR will do TDMA time division multiplex multiplex access. I think I got that acronym right. Um, if for hotspot use, you're not using it. Typically, most DMR repeater owners set up, and I'm probably I don't remember which one is which. I'd have to look at my radio. One time slot will generally be local talk onlys on most DMR repeaters, and then the other time slot on repeaters will be whatever. And mm. they may have a list that they have filtered of talk groups they'll let you go to. If you're doing this at home on your hotspot, you set it to talk time slot two and don't care about it because everything will be time slot two because you're on a simplex hotspot. I mean, See, we could do like multiple shows on yeah, DMR. Sounds like a, all these a modes. bit of a learning curve. It, I mean, Yesu. once you once you figure it out, Steve, is that your chart? I like that. That's, that's, ape. that's ape. Is that ape? I'm chart? not that smart. Yeah, I, I put this well, chart did together. This, he, did you do that for him? No, I did this what? for a video I did a long time ago, and I've used it to help other people since then. But what's crazy is I've seen it like on uh, different groups and forums and stuff where people posted it, nice. and I was like, "Hey, I know the guy who put that together." You're spread far and wide. Yeah, but so like if you do like the just to understand the concept, then it's a good just idea to manually right? program them a couple of times just to get that. There's a there's a couple of things that you need, and, and that your radio should have like time slots one and two color codes. I think they go through nine. I could I could be, maybe it's higher. I don't know. Hmm. Um, but then you then you also need your talk group. Each one of these has a name and a number, but they feed into forget RX group. Like older DMR radios require you to have an RX group. That means that a talk group needs to be a member of that group in order for you to listen to it. But like with the modern ones, like the any tones, you don't you don't need that. But so what's important is, is that when you when you have a channel that you're programming in there, your your channel automatically will get a number like relational database. You give it a name, you know, uh, you know, Tom's local repeater. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you get your talk group, you have to populate that from a table of talk groups that are already populated in your tool. Hmm. So like if if you so like you might want to have um illinois statewide you might want to have your local county talk group you might want to have worldwide you might want to have uh, a usa talk group and then you might want to have the overlanders talk group so you just automatically put those talk groups into your cps first so that way when you go to do your channel you can pick you, you already have them that you can pick from from a pick list hmm. and and then your talk group is assigned a color code just like jim said it's it's the exact same thing as a pl or a cts at, you know i'm talking about those a tone Tone. Tones. It's the exact same <laughs> thing. Atonement. Now, the thing is, is that with um, DMR, what they wanted is, is they wanted it to take up six uh, um, kilohertz of bandwidth as opposed to like traditional FM, which is around around 25. So it uses narrow FM, which is 12, and then it breaks the signal into millisecond chunks. So you actually have two channels operating on the same frequency. 
Oh, hence um, the time slots. Yep. And and That's so awesome. it's just it's just it, it's toggling on and off, mm -hmm. on and off, on and off. So that way it meets that bandwidth limitation. So that's the thing is like color code is their PL tone that you're used to. Time side is the only thing that's new, really, when you think about it. Um, but the problem is that, uh, you know, you're not, you need to have to do that with analog. And then you just have your TX and your RX frequency. Then when you have these channels, you add them either to zones or scan lists. Um, what so zones? what you do, like I create a zone like near my house called QTH. And then I have a zone for near my work because I have, I, I can access different DMR repeaters in each one of those zones. And so like if I'm at home and I'm flipping through the local repeaters, I don't need to scan or use a zone to, to, to toggle through anything that is out of my range. So I just separate them that way. Hmm. And, and then scan list typically with like an analog slash DMR radio, you can put in channels that are of both. So I can scan my local analog repeaters as well as my, as my DMRs. Yep. So stupid question. When you're saying zones, are these like literally geographic zones? Logically, that you're however, or makes some, sense or in your head. Whatever zone yeah, you want. Any to kind call of cohorting, it. any kind of grouping. Yep. Yeah. So I have. Oh, okay. I have. Um, I have a zone of channels for the hot spot here in the house, and I have a zone of channels for the repeater, and I have an analog zone. So in the analog zone, there's only analog repeaters. Nothing DMR. It's just analog radios. The repeater one is digital, but it's for repeaters that I don't normally hit in my house. In mm. my house, I just use the hotspot. So I have three zones, and and then from within those zones, and it's set up like he's got, there's different channels with those talk groups assigned to each channel on whatever frequency. So zones let you aggregate the channels into something that makes sense. Okay. And you're going to have multiple channels. That, I don't think you mentioned this, Abe. You'll have multiple channels for the same thing depending on how you hit it well so the thing is like with my with the with the any tones you have the ability to have i call it promiscuous mode so right. i can listen to any talk group that is transmitting on that frequency and i can filter it based off of color code or i can wild guard it based off of color code and talk group so i can listen to any of that and then I can freeze the radio and then TX on one of those if I want, if, if I want, if I want to communicate bi-directionally. So that's the one thing is like with the older DMR radios, you have to program a channel for every single talk group. So if your local repeater has like five, there's five talk groups I was talking about, you need five different channels, but you oh, don't man. with the AnyTone radios. And that's why the AnyTone radios are. Now see, that's features that want. I haven't used on mine. So what Richard you're talking about. Because I just said I've never used those. I'd do it the other, the old-fashioned hard way. Right. You fancy. And maybe if this is getting too newbie for your normal audience here, then we can switch gears. But I see that Richard mentioned um, a code plug. And as I've been reading through how to set these things up, I come across that term a lot. Can someone kind of dumb that Config down for me, potato head style? Config file. That's all it is. It's database. Config file. Okay. Your database for the radio's program. <clears throat> That's where you're going to set up your digital contacts. So America Link is, I don't know what it is. Alabama link is 31010. So I'm going to put Alabama link in there. I'm going to put in the Toad's um, DMR number, which is 3192083. I mean, it's those it's are the all same thing as a, It's the same thing as an IMG file on Chirp. So you use Chirp to program your radio. I have, right? yep. Mm -hmm. It's, it's okay. the exact, exact same thing. It's just every configuration oh. for the radio. Yeah, it's just... I'm sorry, so I'm guessing folks share all sorts of those things uh, that you can just download and upload yeah, yourself. Yeah, you'll find one in your area. 